welcome to Geo Decisions Geo Corner. Geo Corner is our little corner where we'll share tricks and tips, demos and interviews. Maybe you'll find a solution that could help you as we share how we power innovation with location using geospatial technology to solve challenging business needs. Today we'll hear from Eric Abrams, Senior Project Manager at Geo Decisions. All our Geo Corners will be available on our YouTube channel please consider visiting our website at www.geodecisions.com for more information. Welcome, Eric. Hey, well, thanks for having me. It's exciting to talk about um, GIS Data Fabric today. Well, uh, tell us exactly what is GIS da Data Fabric? Yeah, so I'll kind of jump right into it. I got a slide to share to help explain um, GIS Data Fabric here. All right. so. On the bottom left hand side, you know, there's a definition of, of GIS data fabric. You know, it's, it's a set of data services which provide you know, predictable, reliable, and authoritative capabilities across a choice of endpoints spanning on-premise and cloud environments to accelerate digital transformation. It's a lot of words. So what is what does all that mean? Let's break down what a GIS data fabric is. So a set of data services, you know, data services are REST endpoint. So if you're using uh, Esri products and um, ArcGIS Online, you're you're natively using uh, those those put out REST services that come in the form of JSON, GeoJSON. So those are your data services. So a set of data services would pr provide predictable, reliable, and authoritative capabilities. So what that means is, as you hook to these services, um, they're going to be fast. They're going to be authoritative. You, People have confidence that the data is going to be right, and the uptime of those is going to be, you know, almost 100% on those. So we have those capabilities across a choice of endpoints. So what are endpoints? Endpoints are just basically URLs. So I'm going to call your your organization's URL, call the REST service. It's going to uh, send it a query. It's going to send me the data back that I need, uh, generally in a JSON or a GeoJSON um, type of packet. So. Um, and it's with on-premise and cloud environments. So what that means is um, a data fabric will have multiple places. So you may have on-premise servers that serve some type of data, but at the same time, you may be leveraging cloud-based services or uh, servers that are hosted somewhere else uh, off-site from your organization. So on the, the circle diagram you see there, the smallest circles are represent you know, data and your REST endpoints. So that's where your data lives, and that's where that inf when you call those those endpoints, it's um, bringing stuff out. The line represent those data services. So the line's really the rest um, being able to talk to uh, the data through the, the REST API. And the larger circle represents your organization's um, data standards, your organization's software, your business processes. And um, you could argue that things like your organization's culture and structure belong here too, because that, that um, will help guide um, how this fabric is is set up in your your organization. You know, a driving factor for a data a GIS data fabric is to provide a single point of truth for people, so they know when they come to your endpoint that the data they're getting, as I mentioned before, is predictable, liable, reliable, and authoritative um, across many different endpoints that you have. Um, you know, there are different patterns that can be implemented of this. You know, this is the high level of a GIS data fabric, and so these patterns have different technology, standards, and processes that can represent um, different business verticals. So that's, that's in a nutshell what a GIS data fabric is. So how can someone move their organization forward using GIS data fabric? Okay, there's a few things you can do. One is I'm a big fan of uh, maturity assessments. You can do a maturity assessment in your, on your GIS environment, understand where your organization's at, at and then based on the vertical you're in you know um, put that into a, a GIS data uh, fabric model um, you can develop your data standards make sure that your data has standards so when you you put out those those services they're reliable and authoritative out there uh, if you have an Esri ecosystem environment um, you can push out rest services to integrate data you know work and also, when it comes to software, you can also work toward enterprise licensing agreement that complements this GIS data fabric concept. So you're not always struggling to try to get licenses or have the technology you need. You need to make sure you develop fast, predictable, reliable, authoritative um, endpoints. 
Um, and that doesn't mean, oh, it takes four seconds to get a response. You know, you want that stuff to be quick so people will use it. And last, you can always reach out to us at GeoDecisions. You know, we're experts in this, this type of environment and to help, you know, guide you to, you know, your GIS fabric. Well, thank you, Eric. We will be revisiting this topic in future Geo Corners, so please join us to learn more about GIS data, data fabric in the future. And if you want to learn more about Geo Decisions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at info at geodecisions.com. Thank you.